We're on part two, 23B with Bob Roos. This is uh, Friday, May 11th uh, at 7.30 Pacific time. Um, reminder on the uh, DevCon, go to, to wxdevcon.com or to our website, wxlive.us, and read up about it. You have questions, hit the scope or email, email us. Okay. Okay, so let me widen up. Uh... So, Bob, it's all yours. Again, thank you, Bob, for um, coming on. Just minimize that and uh, sharing because um, you know how actually, stuck I was I with nobody. Something here. <clears throat> Well, uh, yeah, I'm uh, happy to share some of the things that I've discovered, and, and I was kind of excited about uh, this application because well, what I found was every once in a while, going through the help, I would come up with something called managing the functions for you know, something. And so I thought, boy, wouldn't it be nice to have a list of all of the different managing the functions for? So uh, this is Opera and managing, managing the functions. And we'll make that a string and go down and search only the WinDev site. Ah. Oh, functions for managing. OK, well, anyway, Google's smart enough, <laughs> good old Google, um, to know that the different things. But anyway, you can see all the different uh, areas that there are lists of functions. And then what I'd do is I'd go in and I'd uh, look at one of these things. And you know, then, then you can pick the, the function that you want and get more detail on it. And I was doing this over and over again. And I thought, wouldn't it be cool just to have all of this list of um, functions available in an app? And um, so I started uh, putting together a little app. And there were some 30-odd of these functions and things. And then I discovered that there is something else called uh, properties, A S S O C I A T E D. Ah, wrong. Okay. Properties associated with. And these are this whole list of the little parameter things. And, you know, you want more details about what do they do and what are they used for and everything. So I thought, wouldn't it be cool to put those in there too? And of course, then, you're familiar with the examples that are in, um, let's see here, E, my projects. Sorry, not my projects. Um, Windows 16, and then examples, and then training. You can see there's just a ton of examples. And you also see the little tiny icons down at the bottom of the IDE when you click on um, the examples. And you know, and how do you read all of these things in search and search and everything? So I thought, yeah, let's throw them in there too. So what do we have? We have an application that I call Managing the Help as a table, list box. And let's just take a, a run at it here. OK. Here are, here is a list of all the different functions for managing, properties associated with, and all the different examples. Now, it looks like I've actually picked up two of every example. I had not screened them to see whether or not they were in there already, but um, 
But let's supposing, the nice thing about this is let's supposing that you want to know, uh, you're working with trees. Okay. There's properties associated with trees, and there's all the examples that um, have trees in them. Now, I just this morning added the uh, uh, examples, so I haven't really done anything with them other than to just have them in the list. Ideally, I'd love to be able to take and drag and drop this thing over onto the IDE and have it bring up that example, just like you can do from down here. But uh, that's still to come. Uh, our motto, if it seems hard to do, you're probably doing it wrong. I put that up there so that I could uh, remind myself to, to try to keep it easy and simple. Um, so that's, uh, that's what I've done with this little um, example program. And then what I thought I'd do to make it handy and easy to get to was to put it up in the uh, custom menu. Okay, now this is something that's kind of interesting. And when we get into uh, setup and and that, well, you'll see why there's no data in this thing. But I don't understand, and I'd love to know if anybody has any experience as to why these silly X's are in there. And if this had data, they would also the X would be in the uh, selection bar. It would just go in down the line. So, anybody got any thoughts on that one? Let me know. Um, so then, this is uh, Windev 17 is what this app is done in. Um, there, I just made a table. It's got two uh, columns, just the uh, description and the URL. And, and then I populated it by programming. Well, no, I built the files and um, with programming and then I use the files to come into here. I'd like to have uh, a query so that I could, um, I, I tried to, to make a query. It didn't work terribly well. Um, where is it here? Modify selection condition. So I, I ended up, I, um, I just said if it's different from XMP, XMPL is what this page type is for the examples. And if I make this XMPL, then when I run this thing, we only see, we see no examples because it's got to be different from XMPL. So what I was hoping for is uh, something where I could click on examples and it would show examples and click on examples again and then they'd go Be away. A different kind but, of filter. Um, yeah, yeah, a dynamic filter. And yeah. and I just haven't learned how to do that yet, <laughs> along with a lot of other things in Windows. Yeah, but you uh, great. Hey, um, uh, anyway. He meant, he meant, I think that's how he says his name. He says, I think those XXX in the template style on the control he thinks it can't find the images. And um, Chris says, isn't that a missing background graphic? Yeah, the style's oh. different than 17. OK. That might yeah. be. Hey, hey, Rob, go ahead and talk louder, closer. Oh. Yeah, it's the styles. Even though it looks good on your IDE, when it compiles, the styles are different in 17 from you know from different versions. It, it, I had to do it for my app. I had to go to every single item and just refresh the styles. Just go in, check them again, and then it fixes all those X's. It's a little tedious, but... Oh, so you have to go into the dis 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 um, describe and then go to the styles? Yeah, go to the style. Yeah. And then you just have to... And what do you do? Just save it? Just um, accept it? Or do you have to no, change something? I, I, uh, how did I do it? Now, right, uh, I choose a style for the page. I believe it was, not for the control. Also, oh, you on the right yeah, click. Yeah, right click. On the right click. 
Cancel that. Okay, get out of that then. Right click. And right click. Then it says, ch uh, where is it? Oh, I saw oh, styles yeah, the last time. Want. Pick something. You have to pick something, right? Okay, then it yeah, says choose style. style. Is that there what you, you went to? Select choose a style. Fourth one down. There. Now, it, and just sit. just bounce around and click a couple, and then approve it again, and then it should. I'm thinking this has got to be a beta bug that will be fixed because if someone had like 500 windows, yeah. it hey, would be incredibly painful to have to go I'm through and do this every time. Do Wait, uh, you know, there's a. What about that um, refresh or reset? Um, can you just do that and maybe it'll refresh Recompile everything? The application. Maybe upgrade. Maybe well, the upgrade. Might rebuild yeah, the project. Think about that. Upgrade the application. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That reset. Yeah. Try that. Now, uh, go into other actions. Now, this? The same place, but other no, actions. No, no, no. Okay, and then go. Uh, yeah, all the way to the bottom. Yes. Repair. Refresh repair. style and no, skin no, template. No, repair project. No, repair the project. Okay. Refresh style and skin template, oh, too. That could be okay. two of them you could try. I think that's a new one. I don't recognize that. Yeah, because they they do a good job of doing you know a whole bunch of refresh and maybe that's to to fix things. I didn't even look there. I just was oh jeez, I wasted a lot of time. Well, you went the hard yeah, way, maybe well, Rob. Okay, this this let's see what happens. This only shows up when I have uh, let's see workshop executable generate to thirty two bit. And um, Yeah, I thought I'd jazz it up a little bit. Oh, look at that. Did we it's take gone. care of them? Good Nothing. job. We don't know which one did it. <laughs> it's gone. Yeah, man. <laughs> well, the repair right. one seemed to be Thank the you. one to take care of stuff, but that refresh, um, uh, the refresh the style, that could have done it too, huh, Rob? Right. Who knows? Good. Um, but anyway, there's no there's no data here, and and this is this is one of my frustrations um, with this thing is trying to figure out where on earth the data file needs to be. Maybe we can get Peter on the line. Um, hey Peter, uh, the um, put the mic on in case you. Uh, have your mic. Peter, are you there? See, the, the, the database exists here in the um, managing the help exe folder. And there's all of it with the examples and the managing the functions and the properties associated with and all of the examples and uh, <clears throat> and stuff, and so I don't know. I've been playing with the setup and and, and all that, and um, well, let's just talk about setup for a minute. The first part of setup actually is this generating the executable, okay? And I skipped right over it, but if we go step by step through this thing. Uh, you, you name it, and you know I picked a, a nifty little icon. And here I had said to put the splash screen on just so I could tell whether or not I uh, had actually 
change this thing. So no splash screen is probably better. Uh, asking it to recompile the project. And then the next step is picking the operating mode. Um, to keep the size of the file down, I said, all right, I'm going to have an external use of the main library. And I only want to have one instance of this program running. And custom error messages. I didn't. I just let that default. User macro code. Nope. Again, trying to keep the package small. No patches. Uh, English. And then there are three uh, areas that it wants to uh, add to this. And this is where directory for the application data. And I said, all right, I want it to go to all of, um, for all users to have one file. And so it, it comes up with this kind of a path here. This is a, an XP path. I'm on Windows 7. But uh, it'll be a similar sort of a thing. And then um, that, no, I don't have assigned and standard format. I've recompiled this thing a few times and um, use a common framework. Security, include a manifest for Vista and went, uh, later. And there's no specific special privileges for this app. And that's it. And it compiles it. OK, and if I say run the executable, there's no data. Now, we can find out by use of search everything. And everyone, if you do not have search everything on your system, you should get it. It is an incredibly easy program. So I'm going to be looking for a .fic. How do you get this? www.void. Okay. Tools, one word, V O I D T O O L S dot com. It's right there on the front page. Download the installer. Search everything. No, everything. It in search everything. It indexes, it only goes by file name, but it indexes, uses, I'm sorry, it uses the indexes that are built into Windows uh, NTFS and extremely fast. OK, I have on my system right here 358,860 files on, the, uh, on my two disks. OK, if I go .fic, there are 10,900 objects that have .fic in them man, somewhere. Man, that was fast. And if I go man, it, yes, yes. Managing the help. And it's not even required um, that you get these things in order. OK. Uh, FIC help manage the. OK. So that is just, it is just incredible. OK. So here are the different. Um, files It shows the analysis and that. And you can eliminate the matches in the path by pressing Control E. And what did I do there? Oh, it's the word the does not appear in the file name itself. And so managing help links is the file. And this is the one we just now created. OK. And so if I go to this folder, I just right click and say open path. And now there's that. And now let's go to the development directory one, which has the good stuff in it. And that is this one here, 122 KB. And so I can take and just drag this over, say replace it. And now I got to kill this piddly little index. And now when I go back, and to 17, custom menu, run it. Oh dear. <laughs> Look what's back. Um, hey, but anyway, test refreshing. there is. Hey, go ahead and test refreshing okay. that. Refresh the style. 
Um, this is the executable that we just refreshed the style on. Oh. What the heck? This, that's what I think it is. Wait a minute, maybe not. All right, let's go back to, this is, um, let's go back to here and let's look at uh, the EXEs that I have floating around for managing help. Okay. I have uh, I have two different ones. Whoa, one is huge. Oh, I'm sorry. Yes, I, I that is the old one because I um, we haven't done the install yet. So again, if I want to open the path to this and just drag this other one over, uh, I don't want a shortcut there. Silly program. I want to copy it here and replace it. Now, let's go back to 17, custom menu, function help, communist. Oh, sorry, I hope I didn't insult anybody online. <laughs> um, why? Why, why, why? This is 511, 1045. It was just compiled. And when we execute it, it's not right. I don't, this just started happening uh, today or yesterday. It was all right before that. And I've only had this project ever in 17. I started it right off the bat in 17. So, I don't know. Um, but I don't really want to let that distract us too you much from, compile and run it from learning me. about the functionality. Okay, can you hear me? Uh, I can hear you, Arnold. Okay. Um, Peter, yeah. Peter says compile Peter says and compile. run it from the uh, slash exe direct, subdirectory. Does that make sense to you? That's where I... Okay. Uh, if I run it from... I gotta find it. E. My projects helper. Managing the help. Exe. Okay, five eleven ten forty five. That one works. But it doesn't have. Wait a minute, maybe it has the, no? Shouldn't have the filter in it. Oh, no, it's got the big file here. Do you need more than one file to bring over or just one? There are three files to bring over. And if we look at the install process, it it describes the, the files. Um, Let's go do that. The installer is actually an example application, and it's under the tools um, setup, they call it. And in some ways, this, oh, I'm sorry, I'm in 16. Let me go to 17. Tools. Setup editor. Okay. Um, there are there are three files apparently that I need: the exe, this wdl file, and the um, SQL uh, hyper hyper SQL file thing. Um, and. Basically, when you start this out, this guy is not there. Um, okay, it just it just populates that with these two these two files. Uh, the first thing you do is go through and set up your parameters of the setup, and it doesn't seem to hang on to them from one setup to the next. So you got to go through it each time. Uh, I'm going to use the compact installer. I was playing with the standard installer and it seemed to ask more questions. <laughs> I, 
I like it better with just this compact. It says that it um, uh, it won't convert hyperfile five to S hyperfile seven, uh, and some other things that it doesn't do. But that's okay for this example. Uh, parameters and setup options style. Okay. Then you go through this, languages available during setup. I only wanted English. Oh, let's try this. Let's get rid of French because it was languageably deleted. Yes, good. OK, the only option I want is English. Um, you don't need a background image or some of the fancy stuff. And um, the Default directory, it's going to go into program files, managing the help. Uh, we're using compact setup. I have no license file. Data files, OK. Um, automatic without. This is something that's really cool. Um, it will do a, an update of existing uh, hyperfile SQL files without even disturbing the users. I don't know how it does it, but um, say like you change. It's, it's, it's FM3 on steroids is what it is. Uh, Clarion file management system goes in and updates the indexes and deletes fields and does whatever you, uh, whatever you needed to do to, uh, to straighten out the files. It's really pretty amazing. Um, options to install some of the the different components and things. This program is very simple. It doesn't have any of that stuff. Um, edit the location of the data files. The user can change at uh, install time, can change the location, and they will somehow make it right. Hyperfile client server, don't have that. Uh, what do you want to do at the end of the setup? Uh, we want to include an uninstaller. Um, Put an entry in the registry under managing the help. Uh, the readme file. I don't have a readme file, but I could, I could put one in. This seems to be mostly for CDs and and some other things. Uh, one frustrating thing is is that they list these little things down here, uh, their names for folders, and they aren't consistent. Um, this dir common data, and we'll get into to that in a, in a little bit, uh, is not defined anywhere. Uh, icon, if you want to do an auto run on a CD, stuff in uh, replication, we're not dealing with that. OK. Now, I said there's three files that I need to distribute. There's the exe, this WDL file, and I need to add my data file. OK, and that's this file right here. Um, destination directory. OK, I want it to go to that common dir data. That's not even an option in this list. So you have to type it in. And that is. OK, and then bingo. OK, so it added it in. Managing the help links, the base directory is its source, and the destination is the dir common data. Hey, um, Bob, okay. do you have to put the backslash uh, on there like the yeah. others? Do you have to put the backslash on after the common data? Oh, good point. That might not hurt. Um, the file name is the same name as it had originally. Um, OK. The interesting thing is, is that it will not create this directory for you. If it doesn't exist, um, it, just, it just says, Meh, sorry, can't extract the file. Uh, let's see. So this is everything, actually, in terms of we've defined the parameters for the setup. Uh, we can create a shortcut on the desktop, um, create a shortcut in the program group. Um, 
Let's see, version, some options to uh, replacing the file if it's already on there. And um, don't compact the file. OK. <clears throat> and then you just say generate. Now, the generate icon is in, that's options. Actually, there's the generate here, or file generate. Um, at first, I didn't realize that this was uh, an example application. And it's uh, somewhat inconsistent with the normal operation of the IDE. And I was getting a little, little frustrated with that. And then realizing that it's a, um, a separate application that kind of makes it better, I guess. I don't know. Um, anyway, so Mm -hmm. Yep. At 17, I have the beta version, so that's not the examples really aren't there yet. But this creates a um, a setup file, and then you can test it. We do the test installation. Uh, this is uh, version nine, and so much for our English, right? Well, it's just not all. Translated yet? <clears throat> oh, you said yeah, this, I guess well, I, you know, this is a separate program, though, is what you said, right? Yes. Yeah, so maybe that's yes. why it's. Not, this is a separate program. Yeah. Parlez-vous français? Yeah, exactly. Okay, it's impossible to extract the files. <laughs> I, I know what the message says in English because I got it so many times, so I would not proceed. The problem is that whatever folder, and then, I don't know, that the, the setup program choked. It was done anyway, but it, it choked. Um, whatever this dir common data is does not exist on my system, and it will not create it, and it won't tell me what it is. It's kind of <clears throat> I don't I don't quite understand. I mean, so there's some rough edges here. I would hey. Uh, hey, as Bob. I've as Bob? I've started playing with this, I I would actually consider setup builder. Yeah. Um. So, so so this is supposed to be like the setup builder or the wise of uh, uh, WinDev? Is that what you're saying? Exactly. Hmm. Yep. Why, why does the brackets look like they're and bigger on their common data versus their like installed? Or, I mean, maybe it has to exist before it shows up on the list. And when you typed it, maybe it just doesn't know. I don't know. Well, your common data is supposed to be something that's system independent. Mm -hmm. In other words, you go to XP, and it's going to be based on uh, documents and settings. You go to Windows, and it's going to be based on users, all you know, all users or username, and then and so on. So it's a completely different path, and uh, so you can make it system independent by using. Uh, a name like this, but I don't know what they're they're keeping a secret as to what they call Duracom and data on the different systems. I just it was annoying, you know. Um, Setup Builder would create the folder for you if you didn't exist. Well, maybe it's something you should tell Tim to pass so, on to them. Or put it in the free support. you know I um, I mentioned a little bit about yeah uh, through the free support I mentioned some of this stuff and um, I haven't heard back yet um, but anyway that is uh, the setup program such as it is in Windows uh, certainly more than came with Clarion um, <clears throat> And you know you you can figure out what this stuff is. 
I, I wanted, uh, you know, I don't know if anybody's interested in, in having this little app uh, to be able to do this. I, I really like being able to just pop up to the custom menu and, um, uh, this, and being able to type in something like um, tree or string. Yeah, okay, that's functions cool. for managing the strings. Yeah. <clears throat> and all you have to do, and I don't know what happened here. I, I changed something and um, it, it disappears. I, uh, online help. Uh, okay. I don't know why. All right, this is the one that's selected. And if I say open URL, it goes right into the browser, and there are all of the functions dealing with strings. Bunches and bunches of them. UUD code and UUN code and, and just, you know, it's like, wow. You know, encrypt and decrypt and extract strings and HTML, dealing with HTML, um, it's amazing what all is here. So, let's kill this. One thing, if you use it from the custom menu, your ID, well, no, your ID is not dead. Um, <clears throat> no, if it's, if you use it while you're, if, if you're running it, then the ID is dead. Okay. So, it needs, it needs a little more help. It needs a little more polish. Um, you know, I kept adding stuff to it, and so it got a little, uh, a little broken, <laughs> if you will. Uh, let's look at the code a little bit here, just for the fun of it. It's... Now, one thing that I discovered, and maybe somebody's got uh, another hint here, is you see all of these embed points that don't have any code in it. And if you say display, and you control F6, now only the filled ones are shown. But it would be nice to have a, an easy toggle or something to click back and forth. Um, what happens when you click on that open URL? OK. Um, this. If the string starts with, the, the description string starts with note, then um, it's a URL. Actually, that's not true anymore. Um, I, I really should look at the page type and, and, and organize it so that um, pages are either um, cat or name and uh, it, exclude them that way. But anyway, if it is a URL, it just simply takes the link and doesn't open, um, letting the, the shell execute. Just take the name dot uh, com or, or whatever and uh, and open it up. It's pretty pretty simple. Um, then if you click on the note button, it um, will add a blank note for you. Uh, I used it for um, things like, I have a note here somewhere, uh, note, post event accepted control, which is a clarion thing, is the same as execute process. I know I've asked that question three or four times on the uh, Skype chat, you know, hey, what's equivalent to uh, event accepted posting? So I thought I'll start making little notes about what um, what things I I want to remember. Um, so then I thought, well, okay, maybe we can do things some different. So add a note would put uh, a blank note in uh, WX Live. One click right here, it'll take you right to the WX Live site. This one is for the Clarion Wiki for the equivalents and and stuff like that, and that'll kind of eliminate maybe the need for notes. Um, but it doesn't go anywhere right now. This is the um, PC Soft Online Repository. Yeah, we're working on the wiki. 
I, I saw that uh, it's getting closer. Um, just, what's that? Yes. Seamless plug. Good point. Yeah, that's okay. That's okay. Shameless plugs are welcome. Um, I will add that. Um, so that's, I don't know, that's it. If hey, we've got to have you anybody on. has any questions. Any questions? Any questions? Uh, let's see, there's some comments here. There's some comments here, like Peter wrote. Um, he said, a freebie for simple WD setup is, uh, what do you call it, Eno, Eno setup? But he says, for more complex installations, I use a standard WinDev HTTP push setup using WinDev, and that works pretty fine. He says, you'll find all the source code for WD setup, but if you customize it, it's a pain because every time they upgrade, you got to go redo it. It seems like, you know, it'd be nice if we could pass on cool updates and they would in integrate it, you know? Let's see. Yeah. Uh, yeah. The, the setup program is, is quite complex, actually, too. Um, this is not it. I had, let's see. Well, recent projects. And Ben Dell says WD he, actually, setup. Uh, he actually customizes a setup source for each client uh, contract development so that each client is separate. And I, boy, you would hope that it would be the same, and all you have to do is change setup parameters or something, configuration somewhere, instead of changing the source code. My goodness. Yeah. Um, this is is something that's quite incredible. This is the setup program, and look at all of the panes. Um, My goodness! You know, it's twenty seven, twenty eight, thirty. And then and then they run out at forty three. Oh my goodness! So there's a lot, yeah. Yeah, exactly. Maybe there's just, just one heck of a lot. All the different options and wow. Maybe they were testing the pain theory here. Plain theory, I mean. <laughs> P A I N. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah. So I, I'm going to continue to play around with the uh, application. I'd love to get drag and drop working from the examples. Um, I think it, it's easier to find them in my uh, in my setup than than trying to go through um, these things. You know, I mean, maybe we can add this to all the different tabs, and you know, whether maybe we can add your thing to the open source project. Sounds good. Yeah, love to have other people add to it. Yeah. Because uh, you know people have ideas, and we can just keep growing it for us all. Oh. Nice job. Sounds cool. I'm glad you you dove into it. I mean, anything what, else? What a great idea to uh, dive into WinDev, but to go grab their help. Yeah. Okay. Oh, that I tell you, yeah, that was. Uh, that was a journey, huh? So. Hey, uh, you that was a journey, to... yes. And, and you know, I... It... Go ahead. No, that's right. Um, if you go to uh, the chat, uh, oh. there's, there's um, links up there for the different things, like for, you know, set up freebie and such, so... Chat. Any questions? Let me let me bring the chat on over. Uh, so if anybody has any chat, they can chat. Right here. 
So go ahead and type links in there, Peter, or wherever. Oh, sorry, Peter, you did it. Yeah, anybody would like their mic on to say anything or ask anything? Um, and and uh, Dave, may, maybe uh, maybe next week or a week after something like that, maybe we'll have you on to show us some things about the roadmap of what you intend to do and how people can uh, grow from it. Just tell me what a good time is. Okay. Well, Pete, would be nice to have a op an option to type yes. a question that has that passed to the site. You can just answer. You don't. <laughs> Pete. Bob, you have you have the mic. That's <laughs> right. I got a mic. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I, I thought about having a button for that and it would just come up and say, okay, what's your question? And then I would pop in and fill in the site uh, and the Google search and and then um, and do it. Um, what's the, what's yeah. the name of your app, Bob? Absolutely. Bob? The name of my app, help.